Hello, welcome to the first installment of a high schooler builds, or rather tries to build, a hybrid rocket engine. So in this video I'll be going over the design and build process of this first prototype engine. So first, the engine was designed completely in Fusion 360, it's a CAD software if you don't know, and then I used simulations based on RPA, rocket propulsion analysis, which also helped me generate the nozzle design right here. Here is the CAD of the engine. Let's go from left to right. So first we have the inlet for the nitrous oxide, which is our oxidizer. Then we have a servo actuated ball valve that will control the oxidizer flow. Um, the servo is not modeled in my CAD because it's just too complicated. But the ball valve you see here will be moved by a servo. Then uh, the oxidizer flows into a check valve. This check valve will prevent oxidizer from flowing backwards into the tank, which could be very, very bad. So then we get to the end cap. The end cap uh, is, will be 3D printed out of aluminum uh, and it, the check valve screws into it and at the other end we screw in a spray nozzle. The spray nozzle is sized with the correct orifice so that we know how much oxidizer is flowing through it. So then we get to the fuel grain. The fuel grain has an outer phenolic resin liner and this liner uh, will prevent the aluminum from melting. Then inside that liner is the paraffin wax, which is cast right into the liner, and that is what burns away. So finally, in the very end, we have the nozzle. Now both the nozzle and the end cap are secured by radial screws. However, you'll notice that the nozzle side has only three screws, or six, and the other side has eight. Now this is such that Whenever we have an overpressure event, the screws on the nozzle side will fail, will fail first, and that will basically yeet the nozzle out, and that will preserve everything forward the engine, which is delicate, there's electronics, there's a servo, the stuff that we want to keep and save. If the nozzle blows out, then so be it. So RPA is a wonderful tool that allows you to pick your propellant and then simulate how much thrust your engine will produce given a mass flow rate or given a chamber pressure and then it'll also compute the design contours uh, and a bunch of other useful information. So you notice the length of this is exactly one foot, and that's just because immediately these are sold in one foot lengths. Now that we're done with the design, let's talk about how I built this thing. So after I got all the parts from various sources like MasterCar, OnlineMetals.com, and some other manufacturing companies in China that were able to custom machine the nozzle and the custom 3D print the end cap out of aluminum. So after I got all these parts, the first thing I did was drill the holes necessary in this aluminum tubing. So we used a hole drill guide, which made the process a little bit easier, but these were still kind of a pain to drill. So then we cast the propellant, which we did outdoors, and be careful because we mixed carbon black into the wax to make it absorb less infrared energy and, and melt slower. However, the carbon black that we use is carcinogenic, so make sure to wear an N N95 mask and eye protection when handling it. Once it's embedded in the wax though, it's safe. So after casting the wax inside the phenolic tubes, uh, we then simply press fit the tube into the aluminum tubing. And then we added our end caps, test fit everything, make sure it works, and we're now here. Now let's talk about the brains of this whole thing. That would be key bits. This is an Arduino attached to some other stuff like an analog to digital converter. Uh, it's, it receives commands for throttle through this rotary encoder, and then it sends them to this servo right here. It also records data. It records the thrust via a load cell right here, and it records chamber pressure via this uh, pressure sensor right here, which is rated up to 700 PSI. So it takes all that data, it sends it over serial over to a laptop, and then the laptop will, I have written the custom software that will display and record this data in a format that's easy to read. How the software works is that it detects when the throttle goes above zero. So let me turn this up to 90, 100, and notice it starts recording. So now, if I give it thrust, you'll see that on the computer, the thrust graph starts moving. I press it again. And you'll also notice that the total impulse graph keeps going up whenever there's thrust. So now, 
I finish, I turn the throttle all the way off, it goes into post-launch standby mode, and then when I hit reset, it will save the data just recorded, and then reset all the data to zero. So that's it for this video, and hopefully in the next video, there will be a test fire.